My name is Darren Bell. I'm a founding board member of PHA Canada. I um, have been involved with the organization since inception in uh, 2008 and first uh, came into the pulmonary hypertension arena via my son being diagnosed. Uh, Dylan was three years old, diagnosed in 1998, uh, ended up going to see Dr. Robin Barst uh, in New York and uh, he was diagnosed and subsequently put on IV uh, prostacycline Flolan. We went to many U.S. conferences, which were great. I think we attended six conferences and really saw the sense of community and also identified that that uh, community or that need for community existed in Canada and was not uh, currently something that the landscape had. Uh, there were support groups across Canada. There were associations or charities set up provincially on a couple uh, within a couple of provinces, but we, as a collective group of people from across Canada that were either caregivers, supporters, or patients decided that we should come together and form a national organization uh, that was really focused on uh, the patient side of things rather than at that time research. Uh, but we, we believe that connecting the patients with the research component, obviously, but connecting the patients, uh, providing support, advocating for patients was, was going to be our primary objective moving forward. And thus PHA Canada was formed and, uh, I've been proud to be a member of the board ever since, and it's great to see that how the organization has grown. The size of the conferences we hold has grown. Not that I want to see it grow, obviously, for uh, the patient numbers, but it's great to see that more people are aware that they can connect and they're not alone as they face this disease. So Dylan, as I mentioned, was diagnosed at the age of three in 1998. His younger brother, who did not have pulmonary hypertension, actually passed away um, from an unrelated illness, uh, an acute illness in, at the age of seven, and Dylan was nine at the time. And so that was a bit of a left field curveball, and we weren't expecting that. We were really focused on Dylan's health, and uh, Hunter passed away. Dylan uh, subsequently, I think on the loss of his brother, it, it affected his health, and, uh, and he passed away two years later in 2007. Mm -hmm. I got involved with my father. Um, in terms of advocating in Canada for a rare disease strategy, not just specifically to pulmonary hypertension, but more to be a country that had, uh, we were behind on the G7 and all the other countries in the world. The G7 countries had a rare disease strategy and Canada did not. And so started focusing energies there. What kept me motivated was uh, just my commitment to two beautiful lives that I felt that um, I wanted to, the least I could do to keep their memory alive was to keep, uh, keep fighting for them. But also, as you go down this path and this journey, I've met so many people that have had, a, had an impact on me and had an influence on me, and some have passed away. Some are here, part of this community now, and actually a lot of them are, and uh, due to the advances in the field and the therapies, it's great to see many of my friends still. And so what motivates me every day to continue volunteering my time is this sense of community. And uh, once you're part of that community, you can't just walk away. So I'm, uh, it's a pleasure to still be part of it. And uh, even though my connection, as you say, is 10 years or 11 years, years ago, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do it uh, continuously until uh, I can no longer. So CORD, Canadian Organization of Rare Disorders, they helped support my father's motion back in 2008 because of the changing governments that got shelved for a few years. It really began in, in the 2013, 14, 15 area to gain more momentum again. And more recently, a framework was advanced um, similar to what was proposed uh, back in 2008 by my father and his uh, private member's motion, but um, and cords obviously guidelines, but uh, it is now uh, being put into place and is in place for the most part. So there is a national approach to rare diseases. It's not complete yet, still has a ways to go, but at least the governments, uh, the, the powers that be, as well as the population has accepted that this is where we're moving. So it's great to see it. So it not only helps uh, in terms of when we're advocating on behalf of pH patients, it just really helps uh, with anybody that's facing a rare disease. As one in 10 people on average you come across, and I think the stat was one out of every 10 people know somebody or is affected by a rare disease. And so, you know, collectively there's a lot of rare diseases, so it's important 
to continue um, that vein. But on, on the Canadian landscape, it's uh, it uh, has evolved more recently in the last two years. So very pleased to say it's taken a long time, but Rome wasn't built in a day. So I'd say in the last decade, we've grown as an organization. I see a dedicated staff that's really engaged, starting obviously with Angie back in the early years, now with Jamie um, as a, our executive director. Um, we have a great staff. Nobody views it as a job. They view it as their connection to a community. And so it's that's uh, it's nice to see as a board member that connection. And I think from a milestone point of view, I believe knowing that we can make a difference uh, and by making people aware of the disease, giving the decision makers an awareness. It has helped in Ontario where they were pushing back against combination therapy back in 2009, 2010, and we were able to successfully lobby the government to not go down that path with that strong voice, unified voice. Some of those concerns where people will not get optimal access to treatment will always be a concern. It's hard for certain uh, governing bodies to go back on that now. And so patients do have uh, optimal or great access to the new therapies. Uh, they're funded for the most part. And so as new therapies come onto the Canadian landscape or the, the global landscape, uh, I'm confident that uh, we'll be able to have our Canadian population have access to those. And so that motivates me. And going forward, there's still lots of work to do. I mean, I, I get motivated by seeing at these conferences, regional or national conferences, the connections people make in the coming together. And that puts a smile on my face. Whether it's PHA Canada, PH Aware, PH US, we're all fighting for the same thing, and it's to increase awareness, let people know that we exist. My name is Darren Bell, and I'm aware that I'm rare.